I know it's been a while since I posted a video, particularly in the Unreal 101 series. I've been very busy with two projects, however today I'm going to quickly show you some tricks for a new series that I've been doing with Blender Forever. Welcome to Tips and Tricks Thursdays Unreal Engine Edition Volume 1. Let me introduce myself, Insomnia from Unreal Tech, a division of Blender Tech, and welcome to another video. If you enjoy it or learned something, consider liking it and consider subscribing for more Unreal, Blender, coding, and all other sorts of CG related videos. Lastly, don't forget our motto create your way so let's jump right in the first thing i'm going to show you is a few blueprint tips and tricks so i'm going to jump straight into the first person character blueprint i'm using the 4.8 preview one but it will apply to all versions of unreal so the first thing i want to show you is a favorite macro of mine now you may create branches all the time by hitting b and clicking to make a branch which brings in a condition and a true or false but sometimes you just want an if statement if this then true you don't want anything to go in the false and i find the branch can clutter things up a little bit so what i like to do is make a macro called just a simple if and so what i do is i give it an input i change it to an execution and then an output the same deal the execution on input i change to a space and on outputs once i've typed up execute and hit enter and gone into my graph then it blanks it out so all we do is we're just hiding the branch we're, we're really not we're really not saving any performance but i find it a lot cleaner so i also add a sorry a boolean input that i call condition and then i plug that straight into condition and then i put true into the output and then i just save that i compile and save and then in my blueprint graph if i drag my macro out we have just a simple if statement so if so then you can have something simple like that and it's nice and clean another quick one i wanted to tell you about is timers if we make a new blueprint class anyone will do i'll just choose actor i'm gonna call it timers timers are a very very useful way to tick something without taking up performance at every single frame so on event begin play although you can call this on a custom event or anything else you just go set timer you choose a function name so we'll say my function and then time and this is in seconds so event tick is every single frame so that's roughly around every 50 to 100 milliseconds depending on your frame rate we want this to be looping so let's say we wanted to check our actor's position so where our actor is in the game world every 1.5 sec i would type 1.5 seconds make a new function call it my function and then we would go get actor location make a new variable I'll promote that to a variable which I will call actor lock I will set that and then we don't need a return value but if, since this is getting ticked but we could if we wanted to if we wanted to call this function manually but since we're not calling it manually yet now all this will do is it will call my function every 1.5 seconds to illustrate this let's add a print string on there so print string and we will just simply convert the vector to a string so x y and z and it will print this every 1.5 seconds now usually if you call this function on the event tick it would give you every single frame and it go right down your screen however now that we have this timer set to loop if we take this actor and place it in the level you'll see that we get a printout every 1.5 seconds instead of every tick and so this can be very helpful for saving performance on things that use a lot of cpu time like get all actors of class or get all actors with interface that takes a lot of cpu power and so it's better to have it on a timer than a tick if you're able to i try to put anything on timers that i can before I forget, let's say I had some content in one blueprint that I wanted to move over to another blueprint and I just wanted to copy and paste it. So I would select it, copy, go into my other blueprint and paste. Now you get the logic, however your variables aren't made. You'll see they're grayed out. However, what you can do, I was shown this by a friend of mine a long time ago, if you go right on the edge of it, you can right click and hit create variable. You don't want to go on the variable and try to promote. You right click right on the edge of the node and go create variable my string and it instantly creates that same variable. So we could do that for all of these missing variables and then the logic is back to the way it should be. Now what I built upon this to find out is that you can take something with my string here for example 
and replace it automatically. So let me take delta location, a vector, and if I drag it and drop it right on the edge, same deal, not on top of the variable, but right on the edge, you'll notice change node to read delta lock warning, this will break link. So if I hit, if I let go, it's gonna change that variable that I had set there to delta location. And then I can plug it back in, it'll cast it from a, from a vector to a string, but you can, you can replace variables that way. So if I had, say, another bool, I could replace a bool with it. You can see the check mark because it won't break anything. It's it's now switched it without having to rewire anything up. This saves me a lot of time when I'm redoing logic or copy and pasting from one blueprint to another. Going back to cleanliness, another thing I do in blueprints is the very first thing I do is I promote delta seconds to a variable called time dot delta time. Now this is just from my Unity days, but this way it's set every single tick, just like if we get world delta seconds is, and the nodes are rough the same size but I just prefer to be able to have this nice little getter this nice little time dot delta time that I can drag off and use as this exact same value as get world delta seconds I find it a little bit cleaner on that note let's jump to reroute nodes so a good way to clean things up is to use a reroute node so if we go like that type in reroute drag straight across make another reroute let's say we were going to set the actor location over here then we can drag that right in there and let's say actually sorry in the middle let's say we had a branch here so true goes to there and let's say false just went to a print string get that nice and lined up and as you can see we can squish things in there nice and tight before we go any further, I want to quickly show if you have a node selected or multiple nodes, you can use your regular arrow keys to move them exactly one grid square in the blueprint graph. I find this very handy for making things move together equally and for lining things up nicely. Just a quick one without affecting the readability of the script. So that's all the blueprint tricks I have at this moment. There's lots out there and I'll be getting to some more complex ones, but these are some simple ones I just wanted to bring out. Here's one that I love to use whenever possible. When I want to bring a lot of one asset into a graph, all I do is I select them all in the content browser and I drag them into a new window I have, usually on another monitor, but like this works too, right into that graph. Just like this, see it organizes my sound cues nicely, and then all I gotta do is just add them to randoms, select them all, select random, and boom, instant connections. So what would have took minutes took seconds. Adding on to that while I'm here, most graphs have the ability for you to hit control P to bring up a list of all your assets and you can select from your list obviously and you can obviously use a search to filter it down. So that one's handy that not a lot of people know about, but you file open asset you wouldn't you wouldn't think that it brings up a little floating window like this, so I find that useful too. And in a regular blueprint like this here it works too. Just control P and it lets you open a an asset we could open this static mesh and opens it up for us kind of useful sometimes and also when you're in a blueprint f7 compiles for you f7 compiles that saves me a ton of time on the topic of hotkeys under editor preferences you can always set them under keyboard shortcuts there is a ton that you can add and they don't have a lot by default a lot you need to do just ones that help you especially on a per project basis just something to be aware of Here's a quick one. Have you ever been going through categories trying to find something and having to scroll through the whole list? Just hit the little eyeball and hit collapse all categories. You can also expand and collapse. Of course, you can always expand and collapse individual categories, but that one's good for uh, getting all of them at once. So I find that helpful once in a while. So the last one I'm going to leave you with, and 4.8 gives us this perfectly because it takes away the standard gun that was just part of the mesh in 4.8 in the first person template and allows us to replace it with our own. This gives me the perfect time to show you a quick little trick. If we add a component, a static mesh, and if we call it gun, and let's say we had a gun mesh, I don't have one handy, but I'll just choose say a cube mesh. It shows up in our viewport like it should. However, if we attach it to our static mesh, 
Then we get this drop down list under sockets. Let me use the collapse all categories and then just sockets to be nice and neat. Now we can choose where we want it. Let's say we want it on the left hand. You can see it's now attached to where the left hand bone would be. You could have it on any socket. And so, and it'll animate with the character. If I play and eject, you'll see we have that nice little beautiful box just sitting there on the bone moving around. So that's a nice way to add items very quickly. So that is all I have for you today in this first edition of Tips and Tricks Thursdays. Watch out for following the series. So thanks for watching from the team here at Unreal Tech, the division of BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it and consider subscribing for more videos. We're on social media on the links on your screen. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why so we can continue continually improve based on your community input. We also take requests, so we'll see you next time and remember, create your way.